like your sound may be a bit thin, I have some exercises to take it on over to grandma's house and put some meat on its bones. Make it a big boy. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to increase the size of your tone by 15%. Now today we're talking about some concepts that will not only increase the amplitude of your tone, but also give it a pleasantly plump sound. Now saxophonists often use the term big or fat when they describe their desired tone quality. And unfortunately, often we start immediately talking about equipment. Now equipment does have its place in producing sound, no question. But all of that is moot if we don't have the engine to drive the equipment, which of course is our Airstream. So today we're gonna to talk about our Airstream as it relates to articulation, as well as the larger macro phrasing we use in music. And also we're gonna make sure we touch on the big D word, diaphragm. So beyond just blowing more air, we're gonna first take a micro level approach and see how our breath support affects individual notes as we articulate. How do we make them each little chunky monkeys? Now using the inductive method, we're gonna take one single phrase and you can later extrapolate this to more concepts. But first, let's take a listen and see how we use note length and breath support to make our note sound big and full. So when done correctly, using this little blues phrase as an example, we have a very clear beginning and ending to the note with breath support in between. There are gaps in the sound. We wanna separate the notes as is the jazz style, but we wanna make sure we have good breath support and intensity till the very end of the note. Listen one more time and listen for the ending of each note. Now aside from the last note that ends that phrase, you should hear an intensity of sound right up until the cutoff of the note, right before we have the space before the next note. But all too common, we hear something that sounds more like this. So listen again and listen for the ending of the notes. I've only exaggerated this slightly. This is something you hear quite common when beginners play jazz. You'll hear how the airstream kind of backs off at the end of each note, kind of giving it a little taper or a tail at the end. It kills the forward momentum and also makes the note sound a little bit anemic. It's not using a full breath support for the entirety of the phrase. So to fix this, we can use a full airstream for the entirety of the phrase. We're actually blowing and keeping a back pressure for the entire four bars. <laughs> So when we end the note by gently resting our tongue on the reed, we still have a back pressure of air. Makes a good clear ending to the sound. And when we release our tongue, the next start of the note has a lot of power and air behind it, which gives it a big full sound. Now this may feel a bit strange and alien if you've never practiced this way before, so we can isolate and just use an individual note. So let's take that big quarter note G and just practice adding and removing our tongue while keeping the air pressure constant the entire time. And then really what we've done is made our airstream independent from the valve, our tongue, which lets us have a lot more control over the perception of a fatness to our individual notes. It's gonna take some time and some practice. Be patient with yourself. Dr. Wally believes in you. Now, in order to get through all four bars and even beyond in longer phrases, we need to talk about breathing. But before you fast forward or skip to another video, we can all use a little reminder of how we focus on our body. For instance, if I said right now, you unclench your jaw and let your shoulders fall away from your ears. A lot of you, you might have just noticed that you have a lot of tension in your body you're not even aware of. We can all use reminders from time to time, myself included. When I'm practicing, I have to think, am I tense? Am I breathing correctly? So let's talk about it. It's gonna have a big impact on your tone. So how do we breathe? Well, if you're watching this video, you are conscious, which means you are breathing. Good job. But how do we breathe in a way that really supports a big full sound on the saxophone? Obviously, we need a big lengthy discussion of the diaphragm, right? 
But if I told you to pull your diaphragmatic muscles downward into your thoracic cavity while simultaneously tensing and raising your intercostal muscles, I'm using fancy science speak for breathing. I could also just tell you to push out your tummy. And it's absolutely true. The diaphragm and many other small muscles with interesting Latin sounding names are involved in the breathing process. But I'm not interested in that. That's pedantry, dazzling you with facts and knowledge to make myself feel super smart. It just doesn't happen that often. I'm more interested in pedagogy, using simple instructions and even metaphor to get the result, get more people getting the sound they want more easily. So if I have 30 minutes to do a masterclass at the local high school, I don't really have time to start mapping out every individual muscle involved in the breathing process. I deal with relaxing the shoulders and pulling the tummy out. And using those simple terms, we can still harness the power of science. Now, make sure you have your blue and aqua power crystals because we're going to cleanse your saxophone's aura. So in the simplest of terms, all we have to do is imagine our lungs expanding downward. You don't actually have to imagine that's literally what's happening. And as our lungs expand downward, they push down on all those squishy, squishy guts down there, which makes your tummy pull out. And here is where relaxation comes into play. We want to keep our shoulders and all our muscles relaxed to allow for the expansion. We don't want any tension or contraction of unnecessary muscles getting in the way of that expansion. So as we breathe in and fill our lungs, or tone sacs as I call them, that sounded better in my head, our lungs go down, our tummy pushes out. It's a fairly simple process. You've been doing it since the day you were born. Don't overthink it. I would demonstrate this, but I eat a lot of cheese and I'm self-conscious. So when we breathe, we want a minimal disruption of our embouchure, which means we want as little change to our embouchure as we're breathing. Don't take your whole mouth off the mouthpiece. It's not necessary and just a really bad idea. So what we wanna do is keep our teeth resting on top, our bottom lip stationary, cushioning the reed, and then we breathe through the corners of our mouth. You'll get plenty of air that way, trust me. And then when you're ready to play, simply focus the embouchure by bringing in the corners and blow. You can get plenty of air in, keeping everything stationary except the corners of your mouth. You'll get plenty of air, trust me. So how do we know if we're taking a big enough breath and getting enough air into our lungs? Well, what gets measured gets managed. Now, brass players tend to use respiratory therapy devices, these weird cone cylinder shaped things that you breathe into and a little ball moves up and down. But brass players also wear flip flops with formal wear and we're better than that. So I'm gonna recommend we use our melodic studies to track this. Start to keep track of how many bars we're playing in one breath. We don't wanna turn blue while we're playing it, but we wanna see how many bars can we get comfortably through without breathing and keeping a good breath support. Now you're probably fine just playing it normally. You want to breathe after about four measures. Now that's a natural pausing point in the music as often we have after four bars, but if we can connect the antecedent and consequent phrases, making an eight bar larger macro phrase, it's gonna be even better. Now for inhalation, taking breath in, we focus on relaxation and pulling the tummy out. For exhalation, to increase the amplitude of our tone, making it louder, we focus on contracting the abdominal muscles. That's the mechanism we use to forcefully exhale, like you're doing a crunch or a sit up or whatever strange exercises kids are doing these days. It's all in the tummy. Relax, pull out when you breathe in, tense and squeeze when you blow. It's really that simple, don't overthink it. Now we're gonna have future videos on equipment and how balancing the resistance of your reed and your mouthpiece contributes to a big, full sound. We're also gonna talk more about voicing and overtone to tone matching in more videos coming up, so stay tuned. I'll see you next week with another mini masterclass, and until then, go practice.